If you are a longtime viewer of my YouTube channel, this is a pretty familiar scene to you. I am in my office at school because this is the first week that we are going back for our hybrid model. So wish me luck, please. And let's talk about what sold for me last week. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Kitizen, Shopify, and this week, Tradesy? What? So we'll get into that in a little bit, but I am a part-time reseller who sells on multiple platforms, and in this video right here, I shared with you my six top tips on just having the most successful year that you possibly can as a part-time or even full-time reseller, and sometimes it means you have to find time to do things in the most random places. For example, I am at work but it is my lunch period and so I'm filming this video because I don't know when else I will do it. So that's why we've got this weird background, but we're going to talk about what sold for me in the week of January 4th through January 10th, which was a Monday through Sunday. So if you enjoy these kinds of what sold videos and seeing what kinds of things that I'm not only picking up but selling and what kinds of things are selling quick versus what things I have to hold on to for a while, as well as just the brands and whatnot, then I do have a playlist down below that I will link for you of all of my what sold videos. And if you enjoy this kind of content as well as tips and tricks videos, thrift hauls, all that kind of stuff, definitely make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. It was like a decent week. It wasn't amazing. And a lot of that is because I was not feeling well. And so I was not listing as much. I was going to bed at like eight o'clock some nights. I just felt really out of it. I actually got tested for COVID, but I didn't end up having it. I tested negative. And after a few days, it kind of felt back to normal, but I think I just overworked myself. So I really tried to listen to my body and just kind of cool it when it came to, you know, putting too much on myself. So I did. I took a break from listing and cross listing and all that good stuff. And I feel much better and recharged to, you know, get back into the swing of things. So starting on Monday, which was January 4th, I had some eBay, Mercari, and Shopify sales, no Poshmark. So over on eBay, I sold this pair of Born leather knee-high boots in a size 7. They sold for $39.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. They paid $8 for shipping, but I miscalculated by a lot, and they must have lived really far away. I don't really know what happened, but it ended up costing $13.19 to get these shipped out. So I ended up making $30.02, which was still a really great profit. And I had less than $2 into those because I got them at a local consignment store where I shopped in bulk at the end of Shelter in Place. I am actually going back tomorrow. And I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of my favorite place and way to source, which is by myself and in bulk. So definitely, like I said, make sure that you're subscribed, hit that notification bell so that when I put those kinds of videos out, you can see them. But I'm really excited to see what I can find now that like half a year has passed almost yeah half a year and you know it'll be kind of like a new season of clothes the next thing to sell came from the same consignment store and it was this disney and jumping bean collaboration i think that jumping bean you can just get it like kohl's or something but it was this really cute onesie with graphics from the jungle book it had like mowgli and i don't remember the bear's name but it, you know it had characters from the jungle book i did put the word one piece instead of onesie in the listing title on ebay because on ebay the word onesie is actually one of those Vero terms. And so if you say onesie, not only will your listing get pulled, but you will also, um, you know, it, there's a variety of different ways that eBay can punish you. The worst of which is they can shut your store down if you have too many violations, or they can at least suspend you for a few days where people cannot access your listings, which is not awesome. You can't make sales if people can't see them. So I used the word one piece. They were for nine month olds. And I sent out offers to watchers on this for $10.90 cents. This actually had a good amount of interest on all platforms. Um, that was with free shipping and it was so lightweight. It was a onesie. So it was $2.78 to ship out. I made $6.92. It was promoted at 1% and I got that at the consignment store for under a dollar. The next thing to sell also came from the consignment store. And it was this pair of seven for all mankind, a pocket boot cut jeans in a size 32. Those I had so many people send me lowball offers on like $10, $15. And I held my ground because I knew that, you know, the right offer would come along. I think the day before on Sunday, someone had sent me a $10 offer, which I countered because I always counter. But then the next day I got a reasonable offer of $30. I think I had them listed at like 
$39.99 or $34.99 or something like that. So they sold for $30 with free shipping. Um, they did go in a padded flat rate envelope for $7.52. And so after I paid for shipping and eBay fees, I made $19.48 on those. And I got those for less than a dollar. The next thing to sell also came from the consignment store. If you couldn't tell, I've like been going crazy listing through that stuff. But I actually got two of the same exact pairs of this kind of pant, and both of them sold this week. So the brand was Arizona Jean Company, which I think you get that at like Kohl's or something. But they were these skinny denim joggers with kind of like a moto look to it. Like if you look at the knees and just kind of all that extra design detail, they were both in a size 34. So it was great because I just created a multi-quantity listing um, on the different platforms that allow for that. And I got each of them for less than a dollar. I don't know why someone needed two pairs of the same exact pairs of pants, but they did. And I picked up both, even though I wasn't sure about the brand, but they were kind of funky and funky sells. These sold for my full asking price on eBay of $24.99 with free shipping. They did go out in a padded flat rate envelope for $7.52 because they weighed over a pound. If anything weighs over a pound and it can go in a padded flat rate envelope, 99% of the time, that's gonna be the cheapest way to ship it out. If it's under a pound, you probably wanna go down the route of shipping it out first class, cause that's gonna be cheaper. Um, but yeah, if, if they're like pants or jeans or something and you can get them into a padded flat rate envelope, that's definitely the method that I recommend. So I made $14.72 off of those. It was promoted at 1% and I paid less than a dollar for them. I need like a sting. I need like a song that's like less than a dollar. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, I will stop embarrassing myself. Moving on to Mercari, I had one sale on the 4th and it was this Baby Gap striped t-shirt, like a long sleeve t-shirt. It had the word love kind of like roped out. I don't know how to explain it, but um, it was really darling. It was in a size 4. My daughter wore this, so technically it was free. I don't even know where we got it. I don't think we bought it. I feel like someone gave it to us, but I sold it for $12 on Mercari. I paid for shipping, which was $2.84. So I ended up making a total of $7.31 off of that, which was great because it was free profit because my daughter wore it. The next thing to sell was over on Shopify. If you didn't know, I have my very own Shopify store now. And the reason for that is because I can offer the lowest prices since their platform fees are the lowest. There are other costs associated to Shopify. Someone asked me in the comments last week, aren't there other you know, fees that you have to pay. There are monthly fees and whatnot. And then like the initial startup fee. So I do need to kind of like work on my shop a little bit more. I like set it up and then I kind of left it alone. So I need to not only add stuff to it, but I also need to work out some of the kinks, like, you know, allowing people to filter by size. But this was a sale from Monday the 4th and it was this new with tags, vegan leather, crossbody laptop, tablet bag in like this taupey color. It sold for $40 with free shipping after I I shipped it out and after fees and all that kind of stuff I made $29.78 off of that and I am like fairly certain that went to a viewer I don't have the name written down right here but I will put a thank you right here because you are amazing thank you so much Tuesday the 5th I sell on like I don't know five or six different platforms at this point and I had zero sales on every single platform so it happens pretty rarely but it does happen. So Tuesday the 5th was a $0 sales day. On Wednesday the 6th, I started off with a Poshmark sale. So you'll notice I started off the week with two $0 sales days over on Poshmark. Awesome. But on Poshmark, I sold this pair of vintage Salvatore Ferragamo ivory pumps in a size 7.5 A, which is like super, super narrow. And the only reason I picked them up is because I got them at that consignment store for under a dollar. They had a unique kind of like print to the exterior as well. Um, but they sold for $30. That was an offer sent to me. I made $24 and I spent less than two bucks on those. Those were listed for 92 days, but I have a feeling they were relisted and then listed for an additional 92 days even after being relisted to finally sell. The next thing to sell is also from home. It was this pair of Circo gray snow pants or like those snow bib pant things. Um, they're the ones that like have the suspenders. Um, they were in a size 2T. So my son wore these. I got them at a Goodwill 
last year for my son to wear. He wore them and then I listed them this year because this is the kind of stuff that is selling right now. Um, they sold for $11, which isn't much, but they sold in two days. So it's not like I had to, you know, wait around for this to move. And I made $8.05 off of something that was sitting around at home. I for sure did not pay anywhere close to $8.05 at the Goodwill when I did originally pick these up. And my son got to wear them and get some wear out of them. And then we made money on them after he was done. We have gone out in the snow exactly one time this winter so far there's only been like one snow that was worthy of us going out and playing in it and my son kept like snapping the suspenders to a snow bib because I guess that's something that Blippi does I don't know if you know who Blippi is but he is this like guy who makes children's videos and my son loves him so it was just really cute to watch him like you know feeling himself in that way the next thing to sell was this Nautica hooded full zip layered jacket in like a khaki color in a size large. This sold for $35 and I made $28 off of that. It was listed for 64 days and I got it for under a dollar at the consignment store. So I definitely picked up a ton of outerwear when I went there and I put them all kind of in a separate area because I went to that consignment store like in June and July. And at that time it didn't really make sense to list a ton of outerwear because I had also picked up a lot of like summer clothes and fall clothes from them so I prioritized with that kind of stuff but then as we got into you know like the end of summer I pulled out all of the stuff that was before like fall and winter and listed that stuff at that time you can list whatever you want at any time because you know it is warm somewhere it's cold somewhere but because I had like over 1200 pieces of inventory to choose from I prioritized by the season that we were in because people usually are shopping for the season that they're in at that moment the next thing that sold was over on eBay this also came from the consignment store for under a dollar and it was this fighting a line eye t-shirt in a size large I live on like a college campus town and so there's a lot of stuff at our local thrift stores and consignment stores that are associated with the a local college. Um, this sold for my full asking price of $24.99. They paid for shipping. It was promoted at 1%, but I still made $22.76 and I paid less than a dollar. On Thursday, January 7th, I had two Poshmark sales. The first one was this Polo by Ralph Lauren black full zip preppy jacket in a size double XL for men. This was only listed for four days. I listed it after I did my 100 listing day challenge with Amber and Courtney. I kind of like took a break from listing for maybe a day or two because I was like I'm, I'm done like I don't want to ever list anything again but when I went back to it I you know still have a ton of stuff to list and this was one of those and it sold really fast for $30 so I made $24 off of that I got it for less than a dollar at the consignment store. The next thing to sell also came from the consignment store and it was this Penelope Mac corduroy polka dot like jacket, but then there was also a matching hat that went with it. So um, what I did was I used Canva. If you have the pro version of Canva, which is pretty expensive, I don't remember how much it is. I did like a trial and it has since ended and I mourn the end of that trial every day because Canva Pro is pretty awesome. One thing you can do if you have Canva Pro is you can take a picture and you can make the background transparent, which makes it look white. But then what I did is I made the picture of the hat transparent so I could just like pick it up and place it on top of the picture with the jacket. And then it looked like the hat was on top of the jacket. So that's how I made the cover photo for these two pieces and put them together. But the size was 24 months. So it was, you know, like for toddlers, but it sold for $20. I had it listed at 25 and I used my closet clear out method, which is just where I reach out to the person who liked the item and I let them know, hey, it's closet clear out. If I drop the price to X amount, Poshmark will also, you know, take care of some of the shipping. Does that sound of interest to you? And if they say yes, then I will drop the price and make the sale. And I do have a whole video about it. I will leave that right here for you to check out on your own time. But um, this person said yes. They were so excited because they were getting something for, I think their sister-in-law had just had a child or something. So it sold for 20, I made 16, that was listed for 42 days and it cost less than a dollar. Less than a dollar! Because it was from the consignment store. And then on Friday the 8th, I sold the other pair of those Arizona Jean Co. skinny denim joggers. These Arizona jeans were a closet clear out sale. They sold for $20 and so I made 16 and they cost less than a dollar because they were from the consignment store. The awful thing though was when I pulled these to ship them, I noticed that these jeans actually 
actually had a little bit of wear that the other jeans didn't. So like on the pocket, on one of the pockets, there was actually a little tear. And so I reached out and I was like, hey, I'm so sorry. But, um, you know, when I went to pull these, I realized that there's a flaw that I just didn't see when I was listing them. And so I told him, you know, we can cancel the transaction or I can send you like $5 cash with the pants. And he was like, you know, can you send me a picture of the flaw? So what I did was I just took pictures of the flaw. I created a brand new listing and put the pictures as, you know, the pictures for the listing because you can't edit a listing when there's an active offer on it. Otherwise people would take advantage of that in horrible ways. And so I just created a new listing. I priced it at like $999 so no one would accidentally buy it. Um, I tagged him in it and then he was like, let's just do it. Like it's totally fine. And he didn't ask for the $5, but I just went ahead and sent it anyways, because you know, that's like, I don't want to send stuff that isn't in the same shape or condition that I said it was going to be in. So that was totally my bad. So I did send him $5. I'm realizing as I say this, that I did not um, include that in my number. So I'm going to make an adjustment right now. There we go. So now I have an accurate number for how much I earned at the end of the week. Moving on. The next thing to sell was this Michael Starr's maternity, the original tee. It's just like their shirt. It's got like buttons it's like a little bit longer in length um, but it was like the maternity one it didn't look maternity I don't know maybe it's like super stretchy I don't know but it was listed for 37 days um, it sold for $12 which is about what I expected it to move for and I made nine dollars and five cents off of it I did get it for under a dollar so I thought that that was worth it the next thing to sell was again from my own home I feel like I haven't really sold a lot of stuff from my own house so this is kind of weird that so much from my own home has sold but it was this H&M army green pearl snap button up floral shirt in a size two. I got this so long ago and I used to wear it all the time. I just I just don't anymore. So I just went ahead and listed it. So it sold for $15 using my closet clear out method. I think I had it listed at 18. It took 95 days to sell, but, um, but I did make $12 off of that. So that was really cool. And I wonder if I even spent $12 on it in the first place at H and M. I don't know, but I did really like this shirt. I just, like I said, don't wear it anymore. The next thing to sell was this pair of Madewell Cali Demi boot raw hem jeans in a size 26 petite. These only took 11 days to sell and they were from Plato's Closet. I will link that haul video right here. I went when they were having a 50% off clearance sale. Before, I used to go only when they had their 90% off clearance sale. But I'm learning that it's okay to pay up for stuff if you're still going to make good profit. So for example, these I sold for $35, which is maybe a little bit less than what I would have liked to get for them. But because they sold pretty quick, I was willing to, you know, just go ahead and move them. I spent $10 on them. So after after Poshmark fees and whatnot, I made $28. And then if you subtract the $10 for the cost of goods, that comes out to $18. That's still a pretty good profit. You know what I mean? Especially to be able to flip it in less than two weeks. I'm pretty cool with that. I'm trying to get more and more comfortable with paying up for things here and there while also still taking advantage of some of these great like bulk shopping opportunities. I'm trying to balance it and trying to train myself to remember it's not a bad thing to pay more than a dollar for inventory. Moving on to January. January 9th, which was a Saturday. The first thing to sell was this pair of Brooks Neuro Turquoise running shoes in a size nine and a half. These took 25 days to sell. They were just so funky looking and they like popped out at me at the Goodwill. So I definitely picked them up. They sold for $40. So I made $32 on those. And I believe I paid about six bucks for them. The next thing to sell was also from that Plato's Closet at the 50% off sale. It was this cream 100% cashmere mock neck long sleeve dress. This was gorgeous. Someone actually said in a comment in the YouTube video where I hauled it, they were like, I could totally see like Ariana Grande wearing this and just styling it really cute. Absolutely. Like it was just gorgeous. It felt so luxurious. It was only listed for 12 days. I had it listed for a hundred dollars, even though there was no brand associated with it because it was a hundred percent cashmere and just like timeless. It was just timeless looking. Um, someone sent me an offer for $70. So I went ahead and accepted. It had a lot of attention on all of the platforms that I had it listed on. And I made $56 off of that dress. I only paid $6 for it. They only had a price at $12 at Play-Doh's. So I got it for six and I made 56 off of it. Amazing. The next two things to sell in this bundle, I was so happy to see go. I don't know what I was thinking. So last summer, 
was it last summer? Not last summer, because last summer was COVID. The summer before COVID, I went garage sailing, and I actually have like a vlog of this. So I will link that right here. It was one of my first like thrift with me type videos or like garage sale with me videos. Um, I went to this one house and you could tell they like used to sell on eBay or did sell on eBay. And they had all this vintage like cutlery and they had vintage like cups and mugs and all sorts of crazy stuff. I didn't know and I still don't know anything about any of that kind of stuff. I, I want to learn, but also like, meh, I don't know. It's not like super exciting to me, but I thought these were cool. So I picked them up. So the first lot of two mugs that I had were these vintage Norman Rockwell like mugs with fishing illustrations on them like they both had something to do with fishing I like fishing so I was like okay like let's try these out and then the second thing also was the Norman Rockwell illustrations but these were like tankard mugs like you know they're kind of shaped more like this like they're fatter at the bottom and the handle's a little bit bigger um and I think that these were in collaboration with like Long John Silvers or something like that I don't I don't even know like don't ask but four mugs total they were in two listings and when I saw that someone liked them I put them in a bundle and I sent them an offer of $22 with discounted shipping basically I was like please please just take them and they did so I made $15.48 off of those four mugs thankfully I only paid 75 cents per mug so I only had three dollars into them and made $15.48 so not like awful but considering how long I've had these not amazing Thankfully, like they haven't been listed that long. I got them listed maybe in like, I don't know, like the fall of 2020 and I had purchased them in the summer of 2019. That is shameful. I just, I didn't like know what to do with them, but I was, you know, I just kept seeing them and I was like, I just need to get these listed. Like this is ridiculous. So I got them listed. I did relist them once. And since they were relisted, it took eight days for them to sell. I'm not telling you to look out for these by any means, but it, it was, I was trying something new. The next thing to sell was this Quacker Factory green hooded Terry dress cover up. Like I could see you wearing it over like a bikini or like a swimsuit or something. It was in a size extra large. This, believe it or not, I listed during my listing challenge with Amber and Courtney. If you haven't checked out that video yet, basically the three of us tried to list a hundred things in two days and I will link that video right here. But um, it was listed as part of that challenge. So it's only been listed for 12 days and it's old. It's old for $20 with discounted shipping. And that's because I had sent out the closet clear out message the day before. She didn't see it till the day after, but I was still like, I'll just send you the offer and I'll eat the discounted shipping price. It's totally fine. And so I made $13.88 off of that. And that is from the consignment store. So I have less than a dollar into it. Quacker Factory, I believe, is one of those like home shopping network brands. It is not a brand I'm like looking for, but the only reason I got it is because I could see people wearing it like on vacation or something and because it is a larger size. It was a size extra large. So again, don't like pick up all the Quacker Factory that you see. In fact, I think this is the very first time I ever have picked it up. I've heard resellers talk about it, but I've never come across a piece that I was like, I need this. Um, but those were the reasons why I picked it up. The next thing to sell was another bundle. The first item was this pink Victoria's Secret gray zip up hoodie in a size medium. That one I got at the consignment store for less than a dollar and it had been listed for only five days. So it's something that I listed after the um, listing challenge. And then the next item in the bundle was in my four for $25 sale. It was this new with tags joy lab gray gathered shirt in a size small. This also, like I said, sold in five days in the bundle. You know, they put the two items together, I believe, or I saw that they liked the two and I put them in a bundle for them. I don't really remember, but I sent them an offer of $25 with discounted shipping and I made $17.88. The Joy Lab shirt, Joy Lab, by the way, is um, like an activewear brand sold through Target, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's correct. And I got that for free from a friend at church. So really I had 80 cents into this bundle and I made $17.88. So that was really cool. The next thing to sell was a pair of boots by Fergalicious by Fergie. They were the Tyra boot, which was like a gray knee high boot. Um, they were in a size seven. They were listed for 53 days. I had them listed at $50. Someone sent me an offer for 30 and I just went ahead and accepted because I just wanted to move them. We're slowly getting out of boot season here and um, I have a lot of space in my house, but 
boots are a little bit harder to store so I was happy to move them at that price that I got from the same friend who gave me the joy lab shirt so I got it for free and I made $24 off of that and then over on eBay I had a decent number of sales the first thing to sell was one of my oldest listings it was this pair of theory denim trousers in kind of like a boot cut or like more I don't know like a wide flare style. Um, they were in a size 10. I got these at a thrift store that doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> like that's how long I've had them for probably over two years. Um, I sent out offers to watchers on these for $19.90. Someone accepted. So after they paid for shipping and whatnot, I made $19.41. This was definitely old theory and they weren't in the best condition. There was some wear on the hem. Um, I love theory, but it is getting harder and harder to move. I, I actually, enjoy wearing theory as well um, especially like to work and stuff I think that theory has a really great aesthetic to it um, especially for you know career pieces but I don't know it just doesn't move as well the next thing to sell was this pair of new with tags Levi's 510 super skinny jeans in a size 36 by 36 these I got in a thread of rescue box um, a men's rescue box and so I have about five dollars into these they sold for $25 they paid for shipping I made $21.75 the next thing to sell is another super old listing. Again, I've probably had this for at least a year, if not longer. It was this new with tags crown and ivy garden party honeycomb tank top in a size extra small. I thought it was really cute and it was new with tags, but crown and ivy does not move for me. I feel like it sold at like Southern department stores. Anyway, um, it sold via offers to watchers for $14.90. That was with them paying for shipping and it was promoted at 1%, so I made $13.57 on that top. I picked it up at like a pop-up consignment store for around $4, so not a huge profit, but you live and you learn. The next thing to sell was this Glamour Farms. That was the brand. I'd never heard of it before. I think it's just like a boutique brand, and I picked this up purely on style. It was the Southwestern print fringe open front cardigan in a size small. This I sent out offers to watchers on for $18.90, and after they paid for shipping I made $17.97 that was promoted at 1% as well and I had less than a dollar into it because it was from the consignment store you know I will on occasion pick up things just purely based on style even if I don't know the brand or if the brand is kind of like <laughs> you know like I'll do it sometimes because sometimes it does pay off I thought this was really cute and I just couldn't leave it behind I was surprised though that it sold on eBay and not on Poshmark because I typically associate Poshmark with being the platform where you can sell items based on style and I didn't really think of eBay as that platform I also didn't think that I would be selling Quacker Factory <laughs> on Poshmark I purchased that believing that it would sell over on eBay that's why I preach the gospel of cross-listing because the more eyes you can get your items in front of, the higher the likelihood of someone making that purchase. You know, some people... Come in! I know a lot of people kind of pick and choose where they're going to cross-list things or even just have things listed in general. And there are certain, like, generalizations about what kinds of things sell best where, but at the end of the day, you just can't predict. Like, I would have never predicted that that Quacker Factory <laughs> Terry cloth like lime green thing would have sold on Poshmark and not eBay and that this Glamour Farms cardigan with no like brand recognition really would sell over on eBay instead of Poshmark so you just never know and that brings us to Sunday which was January 10th I started off with two Poshmark sales both men's pieces actually the first one was this pair of Columbia mossy oak camo hunting cargo pants in a size 40 these are from the consignment store someone just bought them outright for my full asking price of $35 and so I made $28 on those I had less than a dollar into them and they were only listed for 37 days this kind of like camo print hunting gear all that kind of stuff has been selling really well for me both on Poshmark and on eBay and as a result as I see it in stores I'm definitely picking it up if the price is good enough because it's moving it's selling it's not really like my jam I don't like go hunting and stuff so I don't really yeah but if it's gonna make me money I will pick it up the next thing to sell 
sell was this pair of Newith Tags Nike Air Force One 07 LE. I don't know what LE means. Low and I don't know. Um, white sneakers in a size 11. These were listed for $85 and using closet clear out, I was able to get $70 for them. And so I made a total of $56 on those. They were only listed for three days. Now, the thing with these shoes is that a former student of mine who actually used to share my closet back in the day when she was a senior in high school, but she texted me and was like, hey, um, you probably get this request all the time, so please feel free to say no. But she was like, I have something that I want to get some money back for it. You know, do you think you'd be able to sell it? And so she told me what it was, and I was like, why do you have these? Because <laughs> she clearly does not wear a size 11. And she was like, oh, I got them from my boyfriend, but they weren't his size, and I got them from a place where I couldn't return them. And so I was like, sure, I'll see what I can do. And literally three days later, I sold them. So I gave her the majority of the money. We were going to split, you know, the profit in half, but then after hearing how much she spent, on them originally I was like you can have 50 I will keep six it wasn't much trouble at all especially because they were still in the box and so I had all of the information I needed on the box I had all the information I needed right in front of me so I just gave her the majority of the money because you know she's like a young college kid and then on eBay I sold this pair of cabbie brando straight leg mid-rise distressed jeans in a size 2 they sold for $25 they pay for shipping it was promoted at 1% so I made $21.42 those I got at the consignment store so I had less than a dollar into them they were not the kind of jeans that I expected to move very quickly I have had them listed for a while now but they're like you know, basics, like a staple in any wardrobe. So I waited patiently for them to sell and they did. The next thing to sell was another staple piece. It was this pair of the limited black straight leg dress pants in a size four long. Someone sent me an offer of $16.50 on these. I believe I only had them listed at like $19.99 or something. That was with free shipping. So after I paid for shipping, which was only $4.18, I made $10.67 on those. I did get them at the consignment store. I really am trying not to pick up dress pants anymore, especially given, you know, the climate of our country right now and the fact that most people who need to wear dress pants are working from home. But I picked these up because they were in a four long. So when things are in like a specialty size like that, I will sometimes pick it up if I can get it cheap enough, just because I know that there are people actively looking for that specialty size. So if something's long or tall, um, even petite, like, I, you know, people see they have a really hard time moving petite stuff, but I don't know, moves for me. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari. It was this pair of Calvin Klein performance leggings in a size small. They were like black and blue and white with like a really cool um, kind of geometric print to it. They sold for $12 with free shipping. Shipping was $3. So I ended up making $7.05. I got those for free from a friend actually at school, um, one of my colleagues. She's so funny. She'll give me some stuff sometimes and then every once in a while I'll see that she went through my Poshmark closet and liked a bunch of stuff. So I'll just give her stuff for really cheap from my closet. So it's a nice little kind of bartering exchange that we have. Listen, it has been a week and that's why I am popping in here to tell you about two sales that I forgot to talk about and I'll actually talk about two more later but this is a pair of Roxy high top sneakers and they had like a really cool speckled gray fabric to them. Um, I especially wanted to make sure that I pointed these out because they sold to a viewer named Michelle. So Michelle, thank you so much. I sent her an offer of $19.90 on these, not knowing that she was a viewer at the time, but then she reached out and let me know that she was. And so after she paid for shipping, um, these did go out in a padded flat rate envelope. I made $17.37. I have had these for a little bit, but um, you know, I got them for less than a dollar at the consignment store. So I was super happy with that sale and super happy that they went to Michelle. So I hope you love them Michelle and then the next thing that I forgot to talk about was over on Mercari it was this pair of Makula black faux fur lined like mid calf boots in a size 7 these sold for $17 on um, Mercari I had them pay for shipping and my cost of goods was $6 for these because they came in a 15 piece thread up rescue box shoe rescue box and those boxes are $90 a piece and so you pay you know about six bucks per piece so I ended up making $14.51 off of these before my cost of goods after cost of goods we're looking at like $8.51 so not an amazing sale that's okay you get some winners in those boxes and some losers like these and then I ended my week 
with a sale over on TradeZ. So I have like 11 or 12 things listed over on TradeZ. I am not motivated to like try to do anything over there just because I don't have a lot of high end stuff. And even when I was listing stuff, I never really saw a lot of attention on my listings. I don't, you know, it's like with Poshmark and eBay and Mercari, there's a lot of instant gratification because you can see like if people are watching your item or if people are liking it. And with TradeZ, like I just wasn't seeing any of that kind of activity. So I kind of stopped listing and then I got all these notifications. Like I got something on my TradeZ. I got like a bunch of emails. I think I got like a text and they're like, you made a sale. And I was like, what? So I sold this pair of Cole Haan Gold Karma pumps in a size six and a half. I've had these for a really long time, so I'm super happy that they did move. I guess I had a sale, right? I don't even know like what was going on, but they sold for $29.95. I had them pay for shipping, so I ended up making $22.95. However, the way that they do their like fees and whatnot, if the sale price is under $50, they take an automatic $7.50 commission fee, which is like a little more than 25% of what I made, which is a lot, like more than any other platform. However, if you sell something for more than $50, then they take a 19.8% cut of your profit, which is like a teeny tiny bit less than Poshmark. I feel like that was intentional. Um, so, you know, this one sale does not really motivate me to continue listing over there or anything. I wanted to try it out because there were some people who, you know, were having really good luck with Tradesy, but I don't know, maybe it's like, from here on out, as I'm cross-listing, if something would make sense to cross-list over to TradeZ, this is me being such a hypocrite because I just told you to like cross-list everything everywhere, but really like on TradeZ, it is more about like those higher end brands. So it does not make sense. And I don't even know if you're allowed to list like Old Navy over on TradeZ. So um, maybe when I come across those kinds of items, I will go ahead and list them over there. But for the most part, it's not really a platform for me. Those were my sales. Let's talk about some numbers, shall we? So starting with last week's what sold video, I told you that I was gonna do things a little bit different in my numbers breakdown. And what I meant by that is I am going to continue to share with you the same number that I always do, which is how much I've earned per platform after I subtract the platform fees as well as any shipping discounts that I may have offered. And as you can see, I don't typically do a lot of shipping discounts over on Poshmark, but on eBay, I have been doing more free shipping. So the amount that it gives you does account for any time that I pay for shipping, any time that there's a shipping discount, all the platform fees, all that good stuff. So as close to my net as I can get, but I'm also going to start sharing with you, just like I did last week, I'm also gonna start sharing with you how much my cost of goods was. Some of the items I had to kind of guesstimate on because they're from so long ago and I don't have a record, but I always try to kind of estimate up so that um, I'm telling you a little bit more perhaps than what I actually did pay for it. But I wanna get in the habit of letting you guys know too, like what are my cost of goods and what is my actual net sales after fees, after shipping, and after cost of goods. So on Poshmark, I sold 19 items, and after shipping and fees, I made $408.34 on those 19 items. My cost of goods, however, was $33.20, and I also subtracted an additional $50 because, remember, I gave my student $50. So what is actually making its way into my bank account from Poshmark after all of those you know, subtractions is $325.14. On eBay, I sold 12 items, and after fees and shipping, I made $216.06 on those 12 items. I spent $22.20 on my cost of goods for all of my eBay pieces, and so I was left with a net sales of $193.86. On Recari, I had three sales, and I made $28.87 after shipping and fees. I had $6 in cost of goods, so my real total came out to $22.87. I had one Tradesy sale where I made $22.95, but my cost of goods on those Cole Haan shoes was $6, so I made $16.95 after cost of goods and fees. And then I had one Shopify sale. Because it was a wholesale item, I did pay a little bit more for it, so I made $29.78, but after my cost of goods, which was $12, I made $17.78. I was sitting down getting ready to edit and I realized I did not include my thread up numbers. It's not like they were amazing, but you know, I don't want to miss anything. It's just been one of those weeks. I feel like, you know, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I have been working really hard, um, probably too hard. And my body's been trying to tell me. And so I am going to be taking a few days of vacation from reselling. I think it's really healthy, even though like 
for me, reselling really isn't the kind of thing that, you know, I like hate, I like wake up and I'm like, so um, not looking forward to doing it. You know, I, sometimes I think I can feel that way about like other jobs, but I'm always really excited about doing reseller related things. I think that's part of the reason too, why I don't think I'd ever want to go into it full time because I'm afraid I would lose that. But um, despite the fact that I still want to like go, 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 I know I need a break. So this is just another sign of me realizing that with me like forgetting to add some numbers in and just all kinds of stuff. So especially with school starting, I am showing myself grace. But yeah, so on ThreadUp, I sold two items. The first one was this Lauren Ralph Lauren turtleneck sweater in a size small. I was super surprised that this sold for $69.99 on their website because it's a basic turtleneck. Like it's, there's nothing super special about it. So my payout for it was $23.52 and I only paid 80 cents for that at the consignment store. And that was on Tuesday the 5th. And then on Wednesday the 6th, I had another sale. This one I was happy about in the sense that I've had it in my possession for a very long time. I had it listed. I tried to sell it. Um, it was not moving. So I finally just sent it into thread up and it sold, but not for very much. So it was this 41 Hawthorne, which is a Stitch Fix brand. You can probably get it at like Nordstrom and stuff as well. But it was like this blue moto zip jacket. Um, it was interesting. I thought it was really nice. It just did not get a lot of attention, um, but it did finally sell on thread up for $38.99. So I made $9.00. And 56 cents. The annoying thing is I probably paid about six dollars for that in a thrift store um, some time ago so definitely not a huge return on that but that's what you get with thread up sometimes. So my real numbers when it comes to how much I made this month on thread up I sold those two items for thirty three dollars and eight cents but then um, I had six dollars and eighty cents in my as my cost of goods so I actually made twenty six dollars and twenty eight cents from thread up so the actual amount that I earned after shipping fees platform fees all that good stuff was seven hundred thirty nine dollars and eight cents but my cost of goods was eighty six dollars and twenty cents so after that the real total that I made for this week was five hundred ninety seven dollars and eighty eight cents that's also subtracting the five dollars that I sent in cash to the person who bought the kind of messed up Arizona jeans for me and the fifty dollars that I gave my student. I did not meet my goal for the week in this video right here where I talked about how much I earned in 2020 and how much I want to earn in 2021 just from reselling. I talked about how I want to make thirty thousand dollars from reselling in the year 2021 and in order to do so I need to make six hundred twenty five dollars a week. I wasn't too far from my goal so you know that just tells me I need to push a little bit harder which I'm not going to do in the current week that we're in. I'm actually going to take a few days off. Like I'm actually going to go on vacation mode and just take a few days off because I know I need it. So even though my numbers are not where I want them to be, I have to take care of myself first because without that, there is no reselling business. So um, even though the numbers are saying what they're saying, it's okay. I'll make up for it later. So as far as some other numbers that you might be interested in, as far as like how it broke down by category, guys, my hair is like crazy. What's going on? But um, I sold 20 women's, no, 22 women's pieces, eight men's pieces, four kids pieces, and two hard goods. Really four, but that was two transactions of hard goods. And then I always love to tell you how I'm doing with the stuff that I got at that consignment store that I'm going to get tomorrow. I'm so excited. But I have now sold 452 items from that consignment store for a total of $7,503.72. I did spend an initial investment of $1,400 there. I'm obviously in the green, have been in the green, and I do think that I will end up making at least 10 grand from, you know, the stuff that I picked up from them. And that's not even including the items that I have sold on thread up from that consignment store. So I'm really excited about my continued partnership with them. And I hope you continue to stay tuned to my channel so that you can see, you know, what other kind of stuff I'm able to pick up from them, even just kind of my process of how I pick while I'm there. And I have an idea of what I want to do this time around as I go there and pick out some stuff. I want to try something different. I'm not going to say anything yet just because I don't know if it's going to work out or not. It really depends on what they have and what I come across. But um, if I am able to make a decision about that, I will let you know as soon as I know. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, excuse the fact that I'm kind of in, you know, a different area than normal. I'm not at home. The lighting is terrible. The sound is terrible. But um, we get to hang out. We get to be together and uh, hopefully inspire and encourage one another. So thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!